In this video, we're going to talk about Turbo Repo, a tool from Vercel that allows you to manage your mono repos in a more efficient way and run your tasks much faster. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Hamid. I'm a full stack JavaScript developer. And here on this channel, we mainly talk about modern web dev concepts like React, Next.js, and tools like Turbo Repo. So let's go. Let's start by understanding what a mono repo is. A monorepo is basically a collection of many different apps and packages in a single code base. The alternative setup is called polyrepo, and that's where you would have multiple code bases which are published and versioned separately. So imagine you have three different separate repositories, one for your app, one for docs, and one for a shared utility package. That can be a shared UI package that's used both in the apps and the docs kind of repositories, or it can be shared configs. Now, when you want to make a change in the shared utility that's used by app and doc, you would need to make that change, you would need to publish that to NPM, and you would then need to update the app and docs and bump up the version in their dependencies and then make a commit there so that your apps are now synchronized with the new feature in this shared utility. If you want to do the same thing in a monorepo, they would all live in this same single code base. You can basically make any changes you want to the utilities and then it's shared between the apps and the docs, kind of workspaces or applications or projects as we would see together. And that's all you need to do. They're not depending on a specific version of this shared UI package or config package. They're just depending on the local version in that same code base, which makes it much more easier. Now, the main building block of a monorepo is workspaces. Each application and package you build will be its own workspace. Now, a workspace is basically a folder containing a package JSON file. Each workspace can declare its own dependencies. They can depend on each other. They can export code for the other to use, and they can have their own scripts. For example, if you're using PNPM as our package manager, in the package JSON for our documents or docs app, we are declaring a dependency on the shared utility library. And this is how we would denote that this is a local uh, library or a package in our workspace. If you're in Yarn, it's just this wildcard character and same for NPM. Now, on top of uh, the workspaces that you would have in your different uh, applications and packages, there is also a root workspace uh, that's containing these whole packages and apps together. This is a good place for you to specify dependencies that are present across the entire monorepo. You can write tasks that belong to the whole monorepo uh, as opposed to just individual workspaces, and you can add documentation on how to use your monorepo. So let's uh, start together by building a monorepo and try to understand uh, how different shared UI libraries or configs uh, actually work in a monorepo that's built with Turbo Repo. And at the end, I'm going to also show you as an example how you can uh, add Tailwind CSS to your monorepo, share the config between different uh, apps so that they all use Tailwind and they all share the same config so you don't have to duplicate your Tailwind config um, in each and every app. Now, if you head to turbo.build, there is uh, the documentation for Turbo Repo that you can follow along. Um, and if we wanted to create a new uh, mono repo, what we need to do is to run npx create um, turbo latest. So let me just jump in over here. Just bear with me for a second. Okay. So running this code is going to ask you where you would want to create this new uh, Turbo repo. So I'm going to select the current working directory and it's going to ask you what package manager you would want to use because uh, keep in mind that Turbo repo is not a package manager, it's basically a tool to run tasks and kind of organize your build and uh, pipelines for running different tasks. 
uh, but you still need to use a package manager of recommend uh, PMPM or like PMPM and it's also recommended in Turbo Repo so we're going to go with PMPM but um, doesn't matter it's just a perf personal preference at this point um, and then once you do that you're going to have some packages uh, built already with this basic demo that comes with create turbo script we just ran uh, as you can see over here it tells you that your new turbo repo is ready inside of it you can have different commands you can run pmpm run build which builds all the apps and packages you can uh, do pmpm run dev which develops all the apps and packages we're going to see this in action shortly and it tells you that Turbo Repo will cache locally by default. So if you run your build process and uh, change something minor in one of the packages and run the build process again, the ones that haven't changed are not going to run again. It's going to just use the cache and it will run the build process on the only thing that you changed, making it faster. We're going to also see this in action. You can also connect your Turbo Repo to Vercel so if you want to use the remote cache. So it's not only locally cached, but it's also um, kind of served up in Vercel. So if you have a team member that it's also working on the same project, they can also benefit from the scripts that you've run and what you've cached when they're running the same um, kind of tasks. So let's open up my files and go over what we are having here. Okay, so over here you can see I have an apps folder, uh, node modules, packages folder, and some config files, gitignore, eslint, uh, package.json. This is our root uh, kind of workspace, so it has its own package.json, uh, pmpm lock, and then a turbo.json. So let's, let's see what's going on here. In the apps, we have two kind of applications here. One is a docs. It is a Next.js application in and of it itself. Uh, the next one is web. This is our web application. Again, it's a Next.js application. Um, and then we have node modules, which is a shared folder of all the modules and packages we're using between all of our apps and packages. In the packages, uh, we are having different packages or libraries that we want to share between our apps. So we have ESLint config, which is to share our ESLint config between our apps. We have types, a TS config, which is uh, to share TypeScript configuration in our apps. And we have this UI library, which is a React UI library, again, to be shared between our apps. So you can see that uh, as an example that we had in the beginning of the video for having two different apps that depend on a shared UI library or config library, we are now having everything in the same, in the same kind of code base, uh, which makes changing them easier and running build tasks and scripts faster. So let's look at our main package JSON here, and then we're going to dive into each uh, individual app and look at those uh, package JSON files. So as you can see over here, um, we have our uh, app name demo, and this is a private package. We have two workspaces defined here. One is apps and one is packages, as we just saw here. And we have defined scripts, build, dev, lint, and format. The build script is going to run turbo run build, and the dev is going to run turbo run dev parallel meaning that it runs the dev script in all of our apps uh, simultaneously together now on top of this package json we also have this turbo json which defines the pipeline for running uh, different scripts or tasks so anything that you would want to run with this turbo run needs to be registered in your turbo json in your pipeline so as you can see i have the same build lint and dev as I had over here, let me just open them. So I have this build, dev, and lint, and the same uh, kind of scripts over here, together with some options. So this build script says it depends on the build script of each and every package in the workspace. The output defines where the output of each of these packages would be. So 
one might uh, export its code to uh, a dist folder. This is uh, typical for your maybe UI library or for your shared packages if you want to have an output. And the next is uh, dedicated for our Next.js applications, which is the docs and web. And that's the convention for the output of a Next.js build process. Now for the lint, it does not have any output. And for the dev, we've specified a cache false, which indicates that when Turbo runs on a development server, it's not going to cache any results because the dev is just a, a serve development server. It doesn't have any specific output for us to cache. So that's why we are specifying a cache false over here. Now, as you can see, if, if I dive into my docs, which is a Next.js app, I have a package JSON over there as well. Let me just close this off. Now, the name is important because that's the name of our workspace, and that's how we're going to refer to this specific workspace when we are running scripts or when we are uh, kind of defining dependencies between local um, workspaces. So the name is important. Uh, we have our own scripts. As I mentioned, every package we build it's uh, its own workspace. They can have their own script. They can have their own dependencies. They can depend on each other. As you can see over here, our docs um, app depends on our UI package, which is a workspace package. Denote it here that it's not an NPM package. It's locally in our code base over here. And uh, we have some dev dependencies. We have, we are depending on the ESLint config that you see in the packages over here. So that's the ESLint config. We are also depending on this TS config, uh, making it easier to have this kind of config uh, packages uh, once uh, reduces duplicating this code and config between different projects that you're running. And making a change in any of these will be very easy because now your apps and your web are going to use that source code. There's no need to bump up any packages or push to uh, you know npm registry and then update the versions in your dependencies because they're just uh, using this local package. Uh, same thing uh, will be for the web. If we go to package JSON, again the name is web. That's how we're going to refer to this package. It has its own scripts because it's a Next.js app, has the next dev build and next to start, has its own dependencies. It is also depending on our UI library, which is shared, uh, similar to our TS config and ESLint. Okay. Now let's go ahead and actually run um, our mono repo. So we go pmpm run dev. Let's see what we are working on here. Let me just make this a bit bigger uh, because we want to discuss what's showing in our terminal over here. As you can see, it is running the web dev and docs dev. Now, when we are running this build command from Turbo, it is depending on running the build uh, script of each of our packages. So basically, when we are running npm run dev in this case, it runs Turbo run dev and with the parallel flag. This turbo run will go to each of our packages and apps and run their dev script. So in the web workspace, it is running the dev script, which is a Next.js application. It is also running the dev script inside of our docs, which is again similar to um, dev web. If we go here again, so it's running this dev script, which is a Next. Uh, script running a development server on port 3001. One is run on the port 3001, the other is just port 3000. Uh, nevertheless, uh, there's also this information you can see here that cache bypass force executing because we are running the dev. So cache is false, cache, caching is not in action. It's just running the development server and we are ready to just serve up our application. So let's go and open up uh, port 3000 and also port 3001. You can see both of our applications are being served up. This is the web. If I go and open up the web um, pages, uh, there's only this one home page. And in the home page, all we're seeing is this H1 web and a button. Now, the button is coming from our shared UI library. And this is made possible by referencing this shared UI library 
in the dependency. So here we are saying, hey, we are depending on this local uh, UI workspace. So if I go to that local UI workspace in the packages, I can see over here that I have a package JSON over here too. Now in this package JSON, I have this main attribute indicating what is the entry point of this package. This is saying, hey, you can get everything from this package or export it from this package from this index.tsx file and all the types will be defined in index.tsx file. So let's go to this index.tsx. I can see here I'm exporting everything from a file called button which I can find over here. In the button I can see uh, the, it's a React component uh, and it's just exporting this button. So that's how we are using this inside of our web in home page I'm just using that same button similar to this if I open up the docs in the pages there's a home page too and I'm using the same button over there too as you can see over here um, in the browser now if I go ahead and actually change that button to say button you can see it changes in our docs and it also it changes in our web. So that's how easy it is to share a UI library between two completely separate Next.js application. Now let's quickly look at the shared TS config since both of our web and docs applications are TypeScript Next.js applications. So if I go to my packages and TS config, I can see there are three JSON files over here. One is base, one is Next.js, and the other one is React library. In the package.json, I can see there is a name for this workspace, tsconfig, and that's how I can reference this package as a dependency in my other workspaces. It's also private, uh, version doesn't matter, but it also is exporting files. So there is this base.json, Next.js.json, and react.json which allows us to import these files directly from whatever workspace that depends on our TS config. So if I go back to my app, let's say in the web, uh, if I open up this TS config inside my web application, you can see it extends the TS config workspace and then it's, it's directly importing the next JS JSON file which allows us to just get those uh, configs and extend those configs inside of our web application. Now, as you saw, we are running the dev script on both of our applications uh, in parallel or simultaneously together. Uh, let's see how we can run uh, dev scripts or any script uh, on a specific workspace. What if I just want to run my web uh, dev server and not the docs? So what you can do depending on which package manager you're using, uh, you can kind of filter your scripts to a specific workspace. If you're using PNPM, you can pass a filter flag and specify the name of the workspace you want to run your task on. In this case, I want to run it on the web and I will say run dev. So now that I, uh, now that I, if I run this script, it only runs the dev script for that specific package by running next dev. As you can see here, this localhost 3000 is refreshing, but here on the 3001, which is our docs, it no longer is kind of serving that development, uh, running that development server. Now, if you're using yarn instead of a filter flag, you can use yarn workspace, and then the name of your workspace, web, and then run dev, which is your script. So whatever script you are running, you just have to prefix it with the workspace uh, kind of flag and the works, actual workspace name and then run that specific script. Now let's see how we would go about adding a dependency to a specific package. Let's say we wanted to add Tailwind to this um, web Next.js app. Similar to what we did in the previous step, we can just pass a filter flag uh, and specify the name of the workspace that we want to add the dependency to and run our regular script. In this case, I'm going to go pmpm add maybe as a develop, uh, dev dependency and I'm going to add Tailwind CSS. Now running this is going to only add Tailwind to this web package. We can confirm this 
by looking at the package JSON. So in the package JSON, you can see I've added Tailwind to this guy. But if I go to the docs and check out the package JSON there, the Tailwind is not present over here and definitely not in the root folder. Now, if you want to add a dependency to your root workspace, to the monorepo itself, uh, instead of uh, specifying any filter, by passing a filter flag or the workspace flag in Yarn, uh, you can just go ahead and pass in a dash W or uh, workspace dash dash workspace root to specify that you are intending to add this dependency, whatever it is, let's say the same tailwind uh, to your root uh, workspace. It would be the same thing if you're running Yarn, so dash W, and then you would be um, adding dash D and then tailwind. Now you would you wouldn't want it to add tailwind there, but any dependency that's shared in in your monorepo, not for any individual workspace, can be added to the root, and that's how you would go about adding it. Now let's look at the build process and some of the caching behavior in Turbo Repo that will be beneficial. So if I run pmpm PM run build, this is going to run the Turbo Run build, which in turn looks at this pipeline build in Turbo JSON and runs the build script on every package or app that has a specified a build script. In our model repo, the only two apps that have a build script is this docs, which is running a next build, and the web, which is running, again, the next, uh, as you can see over here, the next build. Okay, now let's look at the terminal and see what happened over here. So as you can see, as I explained, it ran the build script on the docs workspace, uh, cache miss because we haven't run this build process before so it is executing the build script on this uh, workspace it is also executing the same build script on the web workspace and there is no cache so cache miss it's executing the script and when further down you could see it, it is running the script on build script on those Next.js packages and these are the outputs that you would expect from a Next.js uh, build process and it has run two tasks successfully and there was zero cached and it took about 20 seconds to finish. Now if I run the build process again this time, this time it just happened so quickly and it is because if you scroll up and look at this time around, you can see the output for the build script on the docs says that the outputs have not changed since the previous run so cache hit it's just replaying the output that we had from the previous step and it's the same thing when running the build script on the web workspace cache hit we're just using what was already cached in the previous system and when you scroll down over here again we have two successful tasks and run two of them were from cache and as you can see here we ran full turbo this is when you're maximizing what was already in the cache and it only took us 343 milliseconds compared to the 20 seconds that uh, took the first time we actually built. Now that we have learned how to set up workspaces and dependencies in a monorepo and share UI or config packages, let's actually go ahead and add Tailwind CSS to our monorepo and share a config in our packages workspace so that we can use it inside our apps, the webs and the docs, or anywhere else that we want to use Tailwind CSS. Following along with the docs on the Tailwind CSS to add it to a Next.js app, we need to install these three different dependencies. This is the Tailwind CSS, the Post CSS, and the Auto Prefixer. Now, one way is to just do PMPM PM and pass in a filter and the name of the workspace we want to add these dependencies to, as we've seen before. But an alternative way is to just move inside of that folder that you want to add this to. In this case, I want to add it, let's say, to the web app. So I'm going to go into that directory and run the script without passing any filter. So I'm going to, go, uh, I'm going to uh, run PMPM PM add D to add these three dependencies as a development dependency inside of our web. As you can see inside of our web, now our package JSON should show Tailwind CSS, auto prefixer, and the post CSS. Now the next step for us is to run this NPX Tailwind CSS. 
this is going to create the tailwind config and the post css config in this file and the idea is we don't want to define our config over here and then duplicate this inside of our doc instead we want to create a package that uh, is for our tailwind config share that package between anybody that wants to use uh, actually uh, tailwind css so let's just go ahead and inside of our packages folder create a shared tailwind config um, package or workspace i'm going to create a package json over here if i can type and we just copy over um, the setting uh, we don't have a main entry point for this instead i'm going to uh, define some files that we can export from this package similar to the ts config if you remember we had different json files and in the package json we just uh, indicated that we can uh, export these files from this package so whatever workspace that's depending on this uh, package can import these files directly same idea over here so for our tailwind css we're going to create a file which is going to be our tailwind config file so let me just copy over the config real quick over here so this is a config that we want to share between our packages now in the content as you can see here i've included the source this is going to capture anything that's in the apps package or workspace uh, and also i'm including this path so that i'm i'm also capturing the, anything that's inside of my packages workspace for example this ui library that we have over here which is a react ui library i would be also want to use tailwind over here so this second line is also capturing the content of my packages workspace so now that I have this file, I'm just going to go back to the package JSON for this shared file. And I'm going to say, I want to be able to share this file from this package to whoever depends on this local workspace. So let's just go ahead back into the web. And now the next step for us is to actually add this local config package to the dependencies of our web application so just like how inside of the package json in the web we are depending on this local eslint config package or the ts config package we can also go ahead and say hey we also are depending on this tailwind dash config package and we're going to indicate that this is a workspace so it lives locally in this code base it's not in any registry here now that we have this dependency over here, we can go back to our Tailwind config. And actually, instead of having our config over here, what we can do now in this config is just to extend or import that same config that we had over there. So let me just explain what happened. Let me just close this files. So we created this Tailwind config and put our config here. And then inside of our apps web, now in the tailwind config instead of redefining or duplicating our tailwind config all i'm doing over here is that i i am importing the tailwind config package and the tailwind config.js file and then exporting that as my config for tailwind inside of this web app i can do the same thing over here so i don't have to redefine uh, anything that i'm defining here in this config package imagine that you are having different you know extensions you're extending the tailwind for colors and for different settings that you can have over here you're using different plugins instead of having to duplicate this config you write it once and then you share it between any package that's uh, that is going to use it now just a quick uh, quick note over here you see this uh, squiggly lines uh, screaming at me because it cannot find next bubble this is a known issue when you're using pnpm uh, as your package manager with your turbo repo um, if you're using yarn or uh, or npm you wouldn't have this problem uh, one solution is to just uh, install next or those dependencies inside of your root um, kind of workspace or repository i'm not going to do it it's not going to um, cause any problems just so you know what this 
is all about. Now, the next step is for us to actually add the Tailwind directives to our global CSS inside of our app. So now that we have added the Tailwind and its dependencies and we shared our config over here, now we need to use it inside our app and pages. And to do this, we need to create a, a styles folder. This is the convention in Next.js. You would have a globals.css file where you would pass in your Tailwind directives like so. And for this to take effect, we need to also have a custom app.tsx file. Again, this is Next.js, has nothing to do with uh, monorepo. Um, so uh, Next.js 13 has the experimental app directory uh, where you would share your global styles in a different way, but the app directory is still experimental. It's not stable, uh, even in Next.js 13. The stable way is still the pages directory, and this is the way you would share and import your global styles in this underscore app.js, which is a wrapper around the component that's actually responsible for rendering uh, your page. So it's your page component. So we have defined this global styles. We have imported the Tailwind CSS directives. We have included this underscore app. We imported that inside of our underscore app or our custom app and now we should be good to go let's, let's continue with uh, actually running the development server on the our mono repo and see if tailwind css is actually working now one thing to note that if you have installed uh, the dependencies from inside your workspaces like we did here we moved into the web and installed the dependencies for tailwind css what you need to do is that you need to back out of that uh, directory into your root folder if I can type this correctly uh, so inside of our root folder you have to run pmpmi so you would sync the lock file inside of your root workspace with your individual workspaces with that done if I run pmpm run dev this should start the development server on both of our applications so as you can see now we have the resetted styles let's actually go to our packages uh, to our UI, let's go to the button. I can just throw in some CSS, Tailwind CSS. So let's turn the background to say um, green. As you can see here, the button background is now green. And if you actually go to our application to uh, here, um, we can actually test this inside of our home page as well so if i just go in here and maybe turn this into a two text to excel and a font bold um, to see that our page is actually inside of our uh, next.js app is actually also working with tailwind css now one thing we had it to add here for this to work um, if we go to our shared packages for tailwind config if you look at here, uh, prior to this, I only had the source, uh, which was looking at the source directory of what, wherever this config is. So when we are inside of the app, inside of the web, this is just exporting this file. So it's going and looking for a source. That's a convention. You can put in your pages, your components inside of a source. We don't have it that there. So inside of the Tailwind uh, actually documentation, it also shows you to add these pages and components. Um, in the case that they are actually inside of your pages and components rather than the source. So that I had to add a those um, to my Tailwind config. So we are reading the contents of the pages and components as well as the source, depending on how you decide to kind of uh, go about your page. But uh, nevertheless, as you can see, our pages is working with the Tailwind. So this is now bold. And our button, as you can see from our shared UI package, is also able to use Tailwind CSS. That's a wrap for this video, folks. I hope you've seen how easy it is to work with monorepos where you can have different apps and packages in a single code base and how Turbo Repo can make that process much more efficient and faster. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down for me. I will try to be as responsive as I can and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.